Okay, let us pray. And then, Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the last couple of hours. We've been ministering the word of God. And I pray that the man receive some word concerning sorcery, <coughs> which we all are welcome in this room. That's why we're here. But we know that you delivered us from it. And also, Father, through our sorceries, we know that now you have forgiven us uh, and set us free. And you even told us to set, up, set ourselves free from ourselves. And I just thank you, Lord. So now that we are able to move forward with that, we ask that you bless us with your favor. And we know now that we do have faith. So I ask these things in the mind, maximum name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. If you agree with me, say, Amen. 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 All right, brothers, go with me to the book, <coughs> uh, Psalms 5. Psalms chapter 5. Psalms chapter 5. Looking at verse 12. Yeah. Psalm 5 and 12 says, For thou, Lord, wilt thou bless the righteous. For thou, Lord, wilt thou bless the righteous. With what favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield? My final message to you is like I've been telling you. You got favor. Do you know you got favor? Yeah, you wouldn't even be in here if you didn't have favor. Amen. 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 It was the favor of God that brought you. It's the favor of God that allows you to come in this park. Most of y'all know y'all should have been dead by now. Amen. But I wrote down a few things and let you know why you got faith. Amen? If you are born again and Jesus is Lord of your life, then you got what? Amen. Favor. If you have people hating on you and you are handling it with maturity, then you got what? Favor. Favor. Amen. If you are being fed today and clothed today and have a place to lay your head, then you got what? Amen. Uh -huh. If you survive alcohol, drugs, prison, mental illness, homelessness, now y'all better say this one real loud, sickness and disease, poverty, persecution, and tribulation, and you are still standing, then you got what? Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, go. That's what I'm talking about. You're starting to feel it a little bit. Amen. If you are smiling during times of trouble, if you're smiling during times of trouble and you cannot find anybody to smile with you and you have the peace of God in your heart to encourage yourself, then you got what? Amen. Amen. You got to know. You got to feel it. When God's favor hits you, that's what people start to say. Martin, you know you got God's favor on you? You got God's grace and favor on you? You're walking God's grace. And I said, you know, everybody who's been through what we've been through is walking grace of God. Amen. Do you know you are God's grace walking, standing, smiling? Amen. Amen. You got a reason to smile knowing you're God's grace. Amen. Amen. Y'all thought y'all were going to prison or jail when you came to Canaan. You didn't know you were receiving God's favor. There was a whole lot of people who could have been here besides you. Amen. Mm. Amen. I always hear that Canaan man got a waiting list. Yes. How come you got one that is? How many names were removed to have your name put there? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's right. Thank you. Ooh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Amen. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. But sometimes we got to do what David does. Amen? Amen. I love this verse. Because, see, soldiers are going to do what they need to do. Amen. And I tell you, if you've been through what we've been through, you're a soldier. You're a real soldier. You're the best. You work for the devil. Now you're working for the Lord. First Samuel chapter 30. And there's going to come times you're going to get depressed. There's going to come times you're going to want to give up. And people are going to be against you. Do you think coming to Christianity, everybody's going to love you? <laughs> They're going to hate you even more. But you need to take David's example. First Samuel chapter 30. One of my favorite scriptures, to be honest. But watch what he does. Let me get there. Uh, look at that verse 6. And David was greatly distressed. 
through the flesh. For the people spake of stoning in him. Because the soul of all the people was what? Grieved. And every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David did what? Right. Encouraged himself in the Lord. When you get in places, sooner or later, like I said, everybody's going to wait for you, Father. They're not going to see the favor of God on your life. You got to know you got faith. You got to know that when you get in that position and that woman want to make you feel depressed again, you got to look at them like, and you got to be able to encourage yourself by letting you know, you know what? Oh, I, I got faith. Now, you want the favor of what's on my life on you, honey? You better line up. Because favor is following me. Amen. You want the blessings of the Lord, then you need to line up. Because blessings are following me because I got favor. You know, you can say whatever you want to say, but I haven't seen God's favor on my life. Well, how do you know you got God's favor? It's still alive. Amen. Amen. He sent me back to you to provide for you emotionally, spiritually, financially. Amen? Amen? I'm the better husband you ever want to have. You don't know. God has set up a destiny for you by changing me into the man he wants me to be by putting faith on me. So whatever falls on me is going to fall on me. And even if you don't want to line up, I'm still going to get it. Because I got faith. My wife is amazing. All she ever seen is faith. All my friends and my pastor, everybody, how did you do that? I said, you know what? Because I've always been honest with God about my problems. Why would you fail? Did he give it to me overnight? No. But when I made up my mind, I said, go, I'm going to Montgomery. I didn't want to come down here. But I stepped out of faith. I haven't been empty yet. I have not been empty. Am I speaking prosperity? No, I'm speaking obedience. One of my favorite lines is this. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the fat of the land. Isaiah 1 19. Willing and obedient. Whether you like it or not, then favor <coughs> follows you. People will be in a man, their mouths will be falling over. What's wrong with him? He got faith. Well, look at him. What's wrong? He's faith. <coughs> Ain't that right? Don't you know you're highly favored? Ain't that what he told Mary? There's something getting ready to come upon you. The Holy Ghost, he's going to impregnate you. You're highly favored. Brother, you don't think that can happen to you too? I ain't saying you're going to get pregnant with the Holy Ghost, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You're highly favored. I know, hallelujah, you don't have one too. But let's look at this. I like what a guy named David Ray Regan wrote. And I'm just going to read you what he wrote, okay? To have favor means to give special regard to, to treat with goodwill, to show exceptional kindness to someone. Now, this is what God is going to use. Amen? Amen. Sometimes it means to show extra kindness in comparison to the treatment of others. That is, preferential treatment. So God is treating you preferentially. Does that work? Yeah. <laughs> However, favor is not always used in a comparative way toward others. It sometimes simply means that the one favored is shown kindness and treated with a generosity and goodwill far beyond what would normally be expected. Oh, okay. You're getting something far beyond what is normally expected. I think that's good. Amen? All right, what I want to go ahead. This is generally the favor that we receive from the Lord. We are treated much better than we could expect. Of course, every believer is favored to some degree. Now, here we're going to go. Therefore, we must understand God's favor in degree. The more we please God, the more we will be favored by God. The more we please God, the more we will be favored by God. You're not going to walk in favor and still sin. You're not going to walk in favor and still think you can act like a buckwild fool. Oh, my God loves me. He forgives me. No, he'll shut that door. Amen. 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 Also, it is important not to think of this favor in material or worldly items or terms. <clears throat> I'm not blessing you with a car and a house and you think you got favor. That ain't what the favor of God is. Mm. Oh, I got a job. I got money. I got this. I got that. That's not the favor of God. Amen. I want to be clear about that. Amen. That's why I like this explanation. God's favor 
most likely will be given in spiritual blessings. God's favor will most likely be given in spiritual blessings, more than in material blessings. Here are some of the ways by which we obtain the favor of the Lord. Y'all ready for it? By praying unto the Lord, number one. By keeping the commandments of the Lord, number two. By seeking and finding God's wisdom. I'm going to go back over this. By diligently seeking good. Oh, that's a hard one, isn't it? Seeking good. We've been seeking evil for so long. By living righteously. Ooh. Amen? Let's go back up to by praying unto the Lord. Go to Job 33. Job 33. Y'all right, taking a whole lot of those, ain't you? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Job 33. <clears throat> Verse 26. 33, 26. It says, He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable. Amen. Unto him, and he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. But you shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto who? You. Amen. Amen. So, number two, by keeping the commandments of the Lord. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Look at verse 1 to 4. My son, forget not my law. That's the commandments, right? Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. Ain't that something? Look at what God said. I'm going to add to you if you keep it. Long life, peace shall be added to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find what? Favor. Favor and good understanding in the sight of God. And who? Man. God put favor on you so that you can testify as a walking witness what he's doing in your life. Not you spitting out scripture because you memorized it. Book so and so the devil knows those books. But what we do? But let me see the word in your heart walking as an example of obedience and willingness toward God. So I can say, what is it about him? He got favor. He's listening to God. He's obeying God. He's got favor. You didn't even ask him for it. What was Psalm Solomon's famous prayer? Father, just give me wisdom and understanding. And God said, because you didn't ask for the life you had and riches and long life, I'm going to give you that too. Because you knew what to ask for. Amen. 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 Woo, that's another lesson. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Number three, by seeking and finding God's wisdom. Go to Proverbs 8. Seeking and finding God's wisdom. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8, look at verse 35. Seeking and finding God's wisdom. To get the favor of God in your life. Verse 35. For whosoever findeth me findeth life and shall obtain what? Amen. Favor of the Lord. Ooh. We thought we'd give favor because we paid tithes and give an offering and kneel down and complain to God and ask God for everything. No. When you find him, look, let me say something. You found a woman you love. You did everything in your power to make sure that woman was attracted to you and loved you. You spend your check. You took her to the most fancy restaurant, right? You got her what she wanted, flowers, chocolate, whatever it may be. You even cleaned your car for her. Hello. But then as soon as you got it, you left her like a rat. You showed her face, but you took it back. 
that way you want God to treat you? Mm -hmm. You want God to treat you like you treated someone? I'm going to take you out to dinner. I'm going to buy you all the fancy things. Then I'm going to do you and leave you. So if I want to bring you a flower, I'm going to keep you. If I'm going to take you, then I'm going to take you. He's preparing a place for us, isn't he? Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said, when I sit down at that dinner table, it's four. I can't remember what it's going to be. Four this time. I don't know why God maybe used that analogy, but I have to. Amen. But faith is something spiritual that will be an outward manifestation. For who? Witnesses who don't know Jesus. People who think they know Jesus. Or people who are focusing on the wrong things of Jesus. They will see the <coughs> of you. Well, why are you so happy and you only make minimum wage? Because they got faith. Yeah. Why are you so happy and you, you, you come down here at the homeless shelter? Because I got faith. Why are you so happy and you haven't bought a suit? Because I got faith. Hmm. Well, what's that favor? Jesus in my heart. Because I know for one thing, you haven't eaten just flour and water. Like you, know, you haven't eaten the crackhead meal. You know what the crackhead meal is? Anybody know what the crackhead meal is? Huh, there you go. Oodles and noodles. Crackhead meal. Now it becomes a prison meal when you have some cheese twisted. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you must have ate it before, huh? <laughs> Those are cheap for the score, man. Yes, sir. I was looking at my wife. She's talking about we need groceries. We need this. I go to the refrigerator and be like, well, it's packed with food. <laughs> well, then the Lord said, He started speaking to me, and she don't know this. I'm glad she's going to look at this now and kind of repent. Like, we don't need nothing. But see, her emptiness is not my emptiness. Me see an abundance because I've eaten flour and water and that's all I have. Her, when she just sees 20 canned goods and two chickens and a couple of steaks and and one bottle of juice and to me that's rich. But to her, we need more. So if I'm supposed to take care of my woman, I ain't gonna show her this. If I'm supposed to take care of my woman, then I need to go ahead and spend it. Amen. But I had to realize, my empty ain't hurting. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And I'm going home and go buy that stuff. Amen. I mean, Amen. I bought it already, but she wanted more, so I'm going to <laughs> I'm going home and buy it. <laughs> because I just realized, I got faith. Yeah. And her empty is not my empty. I see two more weeks worth of food. <laughs> she see that we're going to be running out tomorrow. I don't get it. But my empty is not her empty. Your wife's empty is not your empty. Your, her favor is not your favor. And how are you going to keep your favor? <laughs> okay. Because when you've been without anything, you got this favor. Amen. Think about it, brothers. Amen. Amen. Well, that was another side thing. God changed this up. By diligently seeking good. I guess that's where I was going. Because I argued with it the other day. We don't need all this. I'm not buying it. No, we don't need that. Here's 70 bucks. We're going to buy $70. That's it. But I like to eat this. I like this. No. We got all that already. Now I got to read the little old bike. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm supposed to go fix that. Not me. Amen. But the preacher always get hit first. Amen. Amen. And God is letting me see just right now how much favor you are. Amen. Ain't that awesome? How many of you are missing a meal here? Ooh, nobody's hand went up. That's right. We got favor. How many got a nice place to sleep? No warm blanket. Amen. Oh, you may get chilly once in a while. You got favor. It may not be the hot water all the time. You might have used it all up. But guess what? You got water. Uh, and you ain't trying to smell too pretty around men anyway. <laughs> now that one don't need the wash, go wash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get between them toes, dude. Praise the Lord. All them cracks and crevices. <laughs> and stop eating that stuff that give you gas all night. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Blah, 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 blah. 
number, number <laughs> I forgot the number, but by living righteously, you can obtain the favor of the Lord in the Lord. Go to Proverbs 14. By living righteously. Proverbs 14, verse 9. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is what? Favor. Among the righteous there is favor. These are always the favor of God in your life. You know, just because you see that person driving a fancy car or whatever, you don't mean they got the favor of God. The devil blesses you too to keep you away from God. You got to learn and mature in the spiritual things so you can know the difference between God and the devil. And God will allow those tests to come your way too. Yeah, amen. There are many benefits of being in the favor of the Lord. Here are some of them. Our petitions are more likely to be granted. When you're in the favor of God, your petitions or your prayers are more likely to be granted. God will compass us with a shield. Oh, God will compass you with a shield. We will receive life. Amen. That's one of the benefits of having favor of the Lord. You will receive life. I know you're going to like this next one. Our enemies will not triumph over us. Ooh. Our enemies will not triumph over us. Watch this one. God will show mercy. When you got the favor of God, He knows your mistakes. He will show you mercy. Amen. Let's go back up to the first one. Esther 7 and 3. Our petitions are more likely to be granted when we have the favor of the Lord in our life. Amen? Mm -hmm. Esther. Chapter 7. Did I say something? Yeah. Esther 7. It's just a form of joy, you yeah. <laughs> those of you who have Esther 7, look at verse 3. And it said, Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. See? He gives you favor and will answer your petition. Now, there's a lot of background concerning that Esther story, but here it is. She got what? So much favor in her life that she could stand before kings and put her petition. And they said, Amen. I don't know how many great people God put me in front of since I lined up with him. You know what I mean? If, if you read Proverbs 30, is it 31 where the virtues were? Yeah. And it said, her husband sits among the elders of the land. That's why she don't mind working diligently. That's the woman that's working. And that's why she's virtuous. But look at where her husband is going to have us. He's sitting amongst the elders. Why? Because he's doing what he's supposed to do. Why? Because he got favor on his life. Why? And that favor on him is flowing through her. Hello. But if number sin is flowing through you, see, there's some verses in the Bible that says if you're married right now and you cause your woman to weep, God will whip your tail. <laughs> see, y'all like that. If a woman is weeping over you, husbands, if a woman is weeping over you, to shut up then God will deal with her too but don't let her weep over you unto the Lord I can't say well I lift it let me tell you boy God whipped my tail I got to the place of cussing him was leaving him didn't want to have no more to do with him backslid and I'm so glad they call it backslid because if you fully went back you would never born again no such thing as fully going backslidden. Amen? The scripture says God is married to the backslider, so that means you're still headed back. And he catches you before you fully get back. But if you went all the way back, ain't no such thing. I ain't never saw a scripture where somebody went fully back. I mean, they were just unsaved. Period. Amen? Never been warned. Well, I'm just backslidden. Really? 
But when you're going to slide up, amen. Well, y'all making me go down another road here. <laughs> so Esther 3, is the benefits of having the favor of the Lord. What is that? He will answer your petitions. Number two, God will compass us with a shield. I love this one. Go back to Psalms 5. Psalms 5, 12. Psalm chapter 5, verse 12. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, will thy compassion with a what? A shield. So that favor covers you. That what does a shield do, people? Protect you. Covers you. When Paul wrote about a shield, he was talking about the shield of what? Amen. To protect you from the what? Fire and dark suffering. Hey, I love being around people reading work. <laughs> Watch this next one. You will receive life for Psalms 30. You will receive life as one of the benefits of the favor of God. In Psalms 30. <laughs> Not a scripture, right? Verse 5. For his anger endured but for a moment. In his favor is what? Life. We be made endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. I think I wrote down some synonyms somebody gave me from joy. They said joy meant Jesus first, others second, you last. Woo! Isn't that awesome? I wrote that down in there. Jesus first, others second, and you last. Everybody know you got the joy of the Lord in mind. I like that. You will... Here's the one that everybody want to get to. Our enemies will not triumph over us. Go to Psalm 41. Our enemies won't triumph over us. Psalm 41. I like that. Psalms 41. Verse 11. By this I know that thou favorest me. Because my enemy doeth not what? Triumph over me. See, where where, where proves it out? My enemy, ain't that what he said? I will make thine enemy a footstool. Amen. I will prepare you a table in the presence of your enemies. Look at the favor of God. Let him talk. Come on, you may have a big meal. You keep on yet. Yeah. <laughs> your lava lips something. Just keep on lava lipping. Come on, I'm going to be eating right in front of you. Big old meal. And I ain't going to brag. I'm just going to be hungry. See, there you go. May even throw your snack. <laughs> yeah, I don't look at prosperity and all that that way. I look at whether I'm obeying God. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because God will force you to go by your enemy's gifts. Look at you. You can't touch me. No weapon form against me shall prosper. Then God said, well, now go take those things and go buy that enemy of yours again. Mm. Go do this and go give him some money. I know they burned down your house. I know they killed your family. Ooh, that's a heavy one. That's, that's why I had to go there. Now, go to the prison and put some money on their books and tell them Jesus loves them. But they killed my daughter. Yeah. One of the greatest testimonies I've seen was when that dude did that in San Diego. Uh, San Diego, San Diego. Where he killed the 20 little kids. Oh, yeah. San Diego. Huh? San Diego. Well, they killed those little kids, but when that father came on TV, they said he forgave the killer of his baby. Mm -hmm. I knew right then I still need some mature. Because even somebody touched my little 27 year old boy, I'm coming at you. Mm -hmm. I'm find you, <laughs> buy something, and I'll just be preaching in prison. Because I'm going to take you out. Because I ain't there yet. <laughs> but watch still do that. I'm just being real. There's some places I'm just not at. Right. You hurt my baby. I'm going to kill you. If you got kids in here, she's my only baby. I love you. I ain't going to sit up here and be a hypocrite talking about <laughs> I will just pray for you holy, bro. <laughs> no. I'm going to tell you that while I'm cutting you up. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I'll trick you into coming in. Let me lay hands on you and pray for you in a minute. Shh. That's too real, right? I have always said I'm going to be real with the men of God. Amen. And I hope 
They may not like it, a lot of people may not like it, and I know people don't like it, but I've always believed men need to see real men of God. Amen. 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 Real men who are not fun, real men who have struggles, real men who want to tell you what's actually going on in their head, and who are still fighting to do what you're doing, get more faith in their life. That's right. I fight every day for the faith I'm in. But I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you and say, I don't think like that. Amen. I do. Am I still growing? Yes, I am. There's just some things I'm more mature than I used to be. You better know it. But I know the things that will touch me today, such as something happened to my I, could, I couldn't handle it. Now, I'm being real. Amen? Amen? And there are other things I would say, hey, man, just go pray about it. I had to do that too. But I had to grow there. But I refuse to be a hypocrite and be phony. Amen. I'm just not going to do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I pray you don't. That is not going to keep you. Always want to kind of glorify God, praising the Lord, speaking in tongues. No, 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 no. You're so spiritual, you're awfully good. You're not dealing in reality. You got to deal in reality. Christianity is reality. It's real. And that's how I keep the favor of God in my life. You ain't going to never hear about me hiding under some table. Well, brother, I never sinned and I don't do that. <laughs> <Not me. laughs> y'all know it, and y'all can see a phony a mile away. Amen. You know, ain't no favor in them. Ain't nobody alive on him. Amen. 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 Don't go out being a phony. Amen. God said, I'd rather have you hot or cold, mm. but never lukewarm. People who are phony are lukewarm. Mm. To say, God, I got an issue with this because I still love it. Help me with it and keep the favor of your, mm. of your will in my life. But I love it. And if you don't come down and help me, I'm going to keep doing it. And say, you know what? Since you're honest with yourself, I'm going to be honest with you. Now. That's how a lot of you got here because you finally cried out to God. Said, I'm tired. I can't stand it no more. But I love it, God. I can't stop doing it without you. Now you're honest. Amen. We all need that help. Amen? Amen. Amen. But to talk about, you know, he just took it in one night. No, he ain't took it in one night for me. <laughs> Some crying and pain. I like what I heard somebody say. They said, pain is the evidence of, of your weakness being released. So every time you feel pain, that's God strengthening you. Because that's your weakness. I was like, man, well, how long did I go there? Because I was so. <laughs> but I like that. Pain is the evidence of your weakness. Uh, excuse me. Maybe it's coming down. No, really? Maybe that's why I heard that. Pain is weakness leaving the body. Pain, yeah. Pain is weakness leaving the body. That's awesome to me. Look at that spiritual too. When you say, God, help me become more humble. He gonna send people in your way that are prideful and gonna get on your nerve. Just so you ask, hey God, I don't wanna be prideful no more. Okay, I'm gonna send you things that's gonna cause you to be prideful. Now you gonna take the home work. Hmm. God, teach me how to pray more. Well, I'm gonna interrupt everything since you say you wanna be in my presence. I'm gonna make sure staff gonna call you, that everything's gonna bother you, everything is gonna happen. Are you still gonna find time for me? Well, this is what you asked for. God, help me love more. I'm gonna send you that guy you can't stand. Mm -hmm. To be a part of the life. Are you gonna love him? God, help me stop. Help me, help me to just get my life in order. I want to be more organized. Well, I'm gonna send you the guy whose feet stink, who fart all day. <laughs> Are you gonna love him through it? I'm gonna make sure the guy in the room that you can't stand snores just as loud as you have it. I'm gonna switch rooms and put you in the room with him. <laughs> Because you said, I want to love you. Woo! See, I'm getting coming on, man. That's what you asked for. Yeah, I finally got a smile out of you. Is that what happened to you? I'm just snoring. I know, I can tell. My wife told me I snored too. I was snoring. I wake up, my throat's hurt. Oh, I hated you guys. Always. Because I asked that same prayer. Lord, help me to love more. Here's the story. And here's a guy with the fan who wanted to put the fan all night. 
and had a window open, even in the winter time, see, I'm from the north. And man, it's zero degrees out there. Shut the window. Because <laughs> you weigh 300 pounds, I got the freeze. <laughs> and all God told me to do was keep on playing. And I had to endure that. So I had to love them, and then they moved. But it had to be some true love. I'm not talking about religious love, fellas. I'm talking about true love. And I cussed, and I hollered. <laughs> Shut the day. Wait Hey, man, turn that fan off. It's night, it's sweat. Zero below zero outside. You got a fan on in the window open. It don't make sense. People waking up with icicles on their chest. It don't make sense. <laughs> but I got the favor of God, eh? That's why he said the next one, show mercy. Did we read 4111 yet? Did we read that? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yes, we did. Show God that you will show mercy. Okay. I'm going to get ready. No, I got a couple more. We're going to finish this. You got to have it. Okay. Amen. God will show mercy. Psalms 119. Psalms 119, 58. And I want to thank my, my friend back there, Edgar Steele. Brother Edgar Steele, man, he, he endures with me so much. Yeah. You know, that's my big old I know he's homie. Could y'all just give him a hand for yeah. that? Yeah. He endures me, man. Now he can tell you some stories. Yeah. <laughs> Psalms 119, 58. I entreat thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy what? Word. Amen. Psalms 119 is one of the most powerful. It's actually five books in one. Did y'all know that? You know, we look at it as one book, but it's five books in one. But it's a blessing. All right. Let's see what we got here. However, this should not be looked upon as some sort of secret formula for getting everything you want. So those little items I just gave you, they're not a secret formula for you. Amen? Amen. Remember I told you, the favor is spiritual. For purposes of his own, God sometimes takes those he loves to special tribes. <laughs> Job is a primary example, but similar instances have happened in the lives of many. However, if we continually draw closer to the Lord, we will come to dwell in his favor, and in his favor is life. What we just wrote in Psalms 30 and 5. For his anger endure but for a moment, but in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Psalms 8. Psalms 8. Psalms 8. Look at verse 4 through 6. What is a man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Mm. And hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Thou hast put all things under his feet. He didn't say half the thing. He didn't say this, this one over here can go there, but this one can't. Do you believe he's put everything under his feet? But he's going to send those tests to you. He will. You say it's under his feet? Then let me see if I let Susie call you and say I want you back. Mm, what you going to do? There was an old skit we used to do, and it was called My Friend Jesus. I don't know if you've ever seen that. But it was a song that we used to do, you know, um, Feel the Nails. You know, I don't know if I sang it here before that. I'm trying to do something right now. Uh, in that skit, the guy gets delivered and throws song. Comes out with George Floyd. You know, he gets home, he's praising Jesus. Jesus gave him a beautiful apartment. Jesus gave him a beautiful, brand new TV. All these wonderful things, car. Right? He's praising God for it. He's in the Then all of a sudden, the phone rings. And it's his old girl. Because he cut loose all these people, but it's his old girl. And she's talking to him. Right? And he said, no, I'm in the middle of praying for Jesus. And I know Jesus is going to you know, do what he needs to do. So I ain't coming to be with you. He said, you know, trust in the Lord with all your might. So he spit the scripture out. <clears throat> then all of a sudden he hears a knock on the door. And he opens the door, it's Jesus. And Jesus walks in. He said, hey, Lord, how you doing? Come on in. 
He comes on in. He said, would you? I'm, Jesus is not talking, by the way. He said, look, Lord, I want to go and talk to her, and I'm going to lead her to you. So Jesus just following him around, and he's still talking, and she's trying to convince him to come be with her. He said, okay, girl, I can't be with you. So he walks a little away from Jesus. And so she says to him, I got a little punch, and I got some forties. He said, what? Dude. Then all of a sudden, Jesus walks up to him, tap him on the shoulder. He said, look here, girl, I will serve the Lord at all times. And I can do to all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right? He walks in the hallway. He's still on the floor. Girl, she can listen. And the girl tells him, look here, if you come on by, we can have some sex. What? Then Jesus tapped him on the shoulder. Thou shalt do no, you know, he just spit out another scripture. No way. You need the Lord in your life. But Jesus tapped him. Then here come the big. So he walks a little ways again from the Lord. And she says to him, I'm on your favorite teddy. Now Jesus, I'm going to on what? Your favorite teddy. Jesus tapped him on the shoulder. He said, look, Lord, just leave me alone right now. You know, I've got this now. Oh. Mm. I'll handle this, Lord. So he said, now what? Well, what do you mean? Well, if you come on over here, we got the blunts, we got the weed. I'm already ready in your favor. Tell me. Jesus tapped him. Lord, didn't I tell you to leave me alone? Mm. Matter of fact, look here, baby. I'll be right there. He hung down. And he takes the Lord. And you know what he does for him? So you got to understand something. Every time you sin, you re crucify him. So he nails the Lord to the cross. And he leaves him hanging. And he goes out to be with this thing that called him. More to the story, he comes back in. Now he's been out, outside the will of God. But you're still hanging. He's still hanging. Amen. Amen. He comes back in from his night out or whatever days he's been out there, leaving the Lord hanging because he's crucifying him through his sins again. He comes in ragged, curls off, torn up. He has a bottle of alcohol, can't move, big old blood in one hand. And he sees Jesus hang, still hanging on the cross when he gets home. So he picks up a sludge hammer. And he begins to look at Jesus. What you doing here? And he spits on him while he's on the cross. And he takes the hammer and he beats him. And he's laughing at him. It's the same guy that Jesus blessed with faith. And he's smacking him. And he's beating him. Then all of a sudden he looks up. And Jesus still has going through every smack, every spit, and every bit of pain. Finally, he comes to himself and sees the Lord. And he screams, Jesus, I can't believe I did this again. And he falls down on his feet at the feet of Jesus. And you know what Jesus did? He got off the cross. Picked him up. things 
may abound to every good work. God is able. God is able. So no matter how many times you want to beat him up and choose your way of doing things, he's still able. Can I try to sing a song that went along with that? So now picture this, that whole story I just told you. There was a song by Ray Mopes that went with him while he was beating him up. Now forgive me, I ain't no great of a singer. <laughs> All right, and it goes, they tell me Jesus died for my transgression. And that he paid the price a long, long time ago. When he gave his life for me on a hill called Calvary. But there is something else I want to know. Does he still feel the nails every time I fail? Can he hear the crowd cry, crucify again? And my cause sing him pain? Then I know I've got to change. I just can't bear the thought of hurting him. It seems that I'm so good at breaking promises. And I treat his precious grace so carelessly. But each time he forgives, what if he relives the agony he felt on that tree? Does he still feel the nails every time I fail? Can he hear the crowd cry, crucify? Again, and my cause sing in pain. Then I know I've got to change. I just can't bear the thought of hurting him. Why? He's holy, holy, holy. that they need Jesus in their life. Just let them repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Father, Father in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I'm, a sinner. I'm a sinner. Forgive me Forgive. for my sin. For my sin. I, confess I confess with my mouth, with my mouth. The, Lord Jesus. the Lord Jesus and believe, and believe. In, my heart in my heart that God, God has raised him from the dead, from the dead. And, I'm and I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord. for saving me. Save me. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.